Hey guys, how's everyone? Ron here. Today I'm going to do uh, one of my favorites, actually. Um, what happened was, <clears throat> of course, I've always been a fan, uh, well, old Hollywood, mid-20th century Hollywood, including the Rat Pack. Started probably when I started studying Peter Law. Well, when I started studying the Kennedys and the Kennedy assassination led me to studying Marilyn Monroe decades ago. And from Marilyn Monroe, I kind of got into the Rat Pack a little bit. So when I started studying the Rat Pack, I started studying Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis, although not directly associated with the, the Rat Pack, but those guys. Um, and then I met Henry Silva at a dinner party who was kind of minorly in the Rat Pack, and he was in Ocean's Eleven, and a friend of Sinatra, and a friend, friend of all the Rat Pack guys, actually, and in a movie that came out just before the Kennedy assassination, produced by Peter Lawford's company, Chris Law. Anyway, all that got me into, um, the, into these guys, and well, Vegas, the Sands Hotel, what a crazy adventure those years were. So then I got into... Jerry Lewis, and I watched an interview with Jerry Lewis, who was a brilliant mind, and the interview in the 60s was just him uh, talking about the world, I mean, with this interview, or I mean, I don't remember the exact stuff, but the man was an intellectual genius, and a filmmaking genius, and a comic genius, and that led me to studying Dean Martin, his partner, for exactly 10 years. So today I'm here, uh, I've done this vlog before at night, but it was like eight months ago when it was a new channel for me and today I'm coming back to do it uh, during the day so without further ado let's look at um, Dean Martin's house there are what two three two or three cars in the driveway here on Maple Drive in Beverly Hills okay so let's cross over and take a look very quiet as always this is very close actually that's Santa Monica Boulevard right there which is always crowded there's a couple cars on the lot in the driveway. Now, Dean Martin lived here for, I believe, about 20-some-odd years until the end of his, till his death, the end of his life, I was going to say, in 1995. I don't want to get too close because people are here, but it's a very, very large house, which... You can't ever grasp the enormity of the size of some of these homes from the outside, but it's a private residence, and at this time on, I am unable to get in. <laughs> Sometimes I get in. Look, you can see where that large chandelier. Like I say, I filmed it at night, and that chandelier looks beautiful at night, or that area, that large area there. So. Dean Martin lived here, like I said, until 1995, when he was diagnosed in 1993 with lung cancer, a very heavy smoker, and he declined to have uh, the surgery. So he lived another two years, amazingly enough, but he died, basically, the report says complications of emphysema. Now, Dean Martin, look at this home next door, we can get a better view of this one, but that's not the home. <laughs> So Dean Martin, of course, was born in Steubenville, Ohio. Was not his real name. He was, uh, he worked for bootleggers. He worked doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Eventually became a boxer when he was about 15 years old. And he did box for quite a while. Uh, at the same time he was boxing, he was singing with bands. And he changed his name to Dino Martini and then to Dean Martin. Um, he worked in coal mines before that. And when he started singing, obviously, that's when he got his uh, greatest success. He met uh, Jerry Lewis at a club they were both playing in in 1946. And they decided to do uh, to team up. And on their very first show together was a bomb. And the owner of the club, who was a mobster, actually, said, if you guys don't get it together by tomorrow, you're out. You're fired. Shit canned, I believe was the phrase used. So they kind of they kind of uh, huddled in the alleyway behind the club, and they decided, let's just go for broke. And what they did was basically uh, decided to improvise the sketch. Dean would come on and sing, and Jerry would just screw him up and get in the way of his singing until they chase each other around the stage. 
then later on they got a couple of writers to work with them with the sketches but uh, until then uh, they basically improvised most of it if not all of it now the Martin Lewis uh, partnership lasted exactly 10 years like 10 years to the day that it was formed uh, they got along for a while really well but then you know egos come in pressures come in the media comes in and Dean Martin said some things supposedly like he's just a paycheck to me or a dollar sign to me and of course Jerry Lewis who was like I said very brilliant had an enormous enormous ego there's a camera right there looking out on the street Jerry Lewis had an enormous ego and I'm sure it wasn't easy working with him especially when he was directing his own pictures and writing his pictures and starring in his own pictures you know the triple crown that's uh, not easy um, Sylvester Stallone has done it and some others have done it obviously Orson Welles but it's not easy and those men are uh, they're probably difficult to work with so anyway they broke up their partnership but both formed solo acts and I think in a way the solo acts worked out better for uh, Dean and for Jerry um, Dean went on to be a singing star an actor as we know he was actually in Marilyn Monroe's last film would have been Marilyn Monroe's last film something's got to give and when they fired Marilyn he said he uh, didn't want to work with anybody else he wanted to work with Marilyn she had Sid Charisse was in it uh, George Cukor famously fighting with Marilyn on that set. Actually, and I'll just say one more thing about Marilyn, but even though this isn't Marilyn, Marilyn was going to be hired, rehired, to complete Something's Gotta Give. Dean was very happy about it. The studio was looking forward to it. They were looking forward to working with her. And of course, she supposedly committed suicide, but that's a whole other subject. I've got at least one vlog on that. Um, but like I said, Dean had a very successful career uh, singing, acting, acting, uh, associations with the Rat Pack, of course, his deep friendship with Frank Sinatra. He had a, his own celebrity roast for 10 years. Dean was Mr. Cool. And, you know, his act was that he was an alcoholic. And supposedly he, you know, so, was a social drinker, but was not an alcoholic. Oftentimes the first one to say, let's call it a night. That's what they say. He had four kids, his son, his son, his daughter, Gina Martin, married Carl Wilson of the Beach Boys for a while. Um, and one of the great tragedies, if not the great tragedy in Dean's life was the death of his son, Dean Paul, uh, who crashed his aircraft, died in a plane crash. And they say that after that, it was very difficult for Dean Martin to recover. And I can imagine after the death of your child, if one ever is able to quote unquote recover. So, um, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis had a very famous reunion at Jerry's Muscular Dystrophy Telethon event in 1976. It was exactly 20 years. They hadn't seen each other literally in 20 years since their famous acrimonious breakup, which was, you know, like a divorce. Um, and uh, Frank Sinatra planned for Dean to come in, and he Dean exited a limo with, like, six other people and had a raincoat over his head and a hat and sunglasses. And uh, you can, you know, you can watch it. I've seen it in one, the clips of it in one when Dean comes off you can see that Jerry Jerry Lewis is genuinely shocked but please they hug they kiss they're a little teary-eyed they ask about each other jokingly and um, it didn't lead to you know a full-scale reunion but they did work together I believe one more time after that in uh, I believe it was 1989 I think it was on Dean's 72nd birthday which I believe was in 1989 uh, but it was, you know, it was a, a nice event for everybody. And, of course, the audience gave them a standing, loca uh, standing ovation. And like I say, Dean continued to work um, uh, until he got ill and um, lived in this house that I just showed you uh, until his death. Also lived up on Copa de Oro in Beverly, uh, Bel, Bel Air, up the hill a few miles. And I may do that one, but it's more difficult because the streets are windy and curvy and it's difficult to park on them and so on and so forth. So anyway, last home of the great, great Dean Martin, great 
icon of the 20th century, one of the greatest singers, performers, entertainers, and a good, pretty good comedian, too, of his time. And, you know, also, I just want to say, if you, if you notice a lot of the, if you watch clips of Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis doing their shtick, doing their act, including the time that, I'll show you the house again for a second, including the so-called reunion at the telethon event in 1976, they get face to face. I mean, so close, they look like they're going to kiss each other. So, yeah, there were apparently rumors. It was it was a different era. It wasn't like today. Um, it certainly wasn't socially acceptable. So there were rumors that they were, you know, lovers or, you know, wannabe lovers. But uh, I certainly don't believe a second of that because... Uh, they were great womanizers, both of them. Both of them were womanizers like, well, like every guy in the Rat Pack. I don't believe it, but it's interesting to see how physically close they would get. Now, maybe that was for the sound or for the camera sometimes. And, you know, on stay on, on film, you do have to get closer than uh, natural for a medium shot or a close-up. But who knows? But it's very interesting. Obviously, they were they were very close. And, uh, you know, like I say, if not for the media and the egos and the women and the wives and everything else, the external forces, maybe they would have stayed uh, partners uh, forever, or, you know, but who knows. All right, folks, so that's it from Dean Martin's house on North Maple Drive here in Beverly Hills. And um, if you like the channel, please subscribe. My name is Ron. If you haven't already subscribed, if you do subscribe, please hit the little bell icon next to the subscription button, and you'll get notifications as to when I post. And please give the channel likes. That's what moves it along. I would really appreciate it. And I will see you guys at the next location. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.